The word Templar is derived from concepts in the Bible, where every person and the community are seen as temples in which God's Spirit dwells. The Temple Society was founded by two men, Christoph Hoffmann, who was chairman of a German congregation of the Moravian Church, also called the Unitas Fratrum, Latin for Unity of the Brethren, one of the oldest Protestant denominations in the world, dating back to the Bohemian Reformation of the 15th century, founded in the Kingdom of Bohemia. The other was George David Hardegg, who in 1868 purchased land at the foot of Mount Carmel, a coastal mountain range in northern Israel stretching from the Mediterranean Sea towards the southeast, where Israel's third largest city called Haifa is located. At the time, Haifa had a population of 4,000 Arabs, and the Templars are credited today with the development of the city, with religious colonies spreading congregations to Jaffa, Jerusalem, and Sorona, where they established a regular coach service between Haifa and other cities, promoting tourism, making important contributions to road construction, and establishing a lot of agriculture. For example, the colony's oranges were the first to carry the Jaffa Orange brand, one of the better known agricultural brands in Europe, used to market Israeli oranges to this day. Their aim was to promote spiritual cooperation to advance the rebuilding of the temple in the Holy Land, then called Palestine, in the belief that this foundation will promote the second coming of Christ. In 1898, Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany visited the colonies and initiated the formation of a society for the advancement of the German settlements in Palestine enabling the settlers to acquire land for new settlements by offering them low-interest loans. Waves of pioneer settlers followed in 1902, 1903, 1906, and 1907, with Templar communities in what was then called Palestine, now numbering in the thousands. Fast forward to World War I and the events associated with it, such as the Balfour Declaration, when the British Army conquered the Holy Land at the end of 1917, matters started to change for the German Templars. In July and August of 1918, the British sent almost a thousand Templars to an internment camp near Cairo in Egypt. In April 1920, most were deported to Germany. All the property of the Templars of enemy nationality, meaning Germans, was taken into public custodianship with the establishment of a regular British administration in 1918, Templar property and livestock was seized, labeled as enemy property, and rented out with profits collected by the British. In April 1920, the Allies convened at the Conference of San Remo, agreeing on the British rule in Palestine. Fast forward to 1933 and the rise of the Nationalist Socialist government in Germany. Many of the Templars that weren't deported officially joined the Nationalist German Party, who opened a branch in Haifa in 1934, followed by another one in Jaffa. At the time, it was not uncommon to see a Nationalist Socialist parade in the streets of Tel Aviv, with flags and uniforms in full regalia. This image was from Jerusalem, and you can see the flags for yourself out in the open. Here's an article from 1938 which was published in the sixth year of the transfer agreement, where German Jews voluntarily went to transfer camps from 1933 to 1939 and were not only given a ride to the Holy Land on German ships. Once they arrived, they were given back a large portion of their assets, whether it be money or things like real estate, with another portion of it going to Jewish organizations, which used it for various common goods and services. You can find out more about it online, such as articles called Transfer Agreement on Wikipedia or Jewish websites where it's called the Havara Agreement. 100% available mainstream knowledge, even if it's ignored 100% by Hollywood and the controlled corporate media. The German camps were established to send people and their assets to Palestine by the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, something overlooked and left out 
by people like Steven Spielberg, but nonetheless part of history and factual reality. Live on Channel 5, this is the 10 o'clock news with Deborah Norville. Coming out revealing secret negotiation between the Nazis and the Zionists in 1933, which allowed German Jews and their assets to go to Palestine. American Jews marched calling for the boycott of all German exports. Jews throughout Europe echoed that call. So did Jews everywhere. But a group of Zionists at the same time was quietly negotiating an agreement with the Nazis to allow the immigration of German Jews and the transfer of their assets to Palestine. That deal, reported in August 1933, was the transfer agreement. Palestine, sparsely settled by Jews at the time, was radically changed as a result. I lived in Palestine from 1933 to 1936, and uh, we saw every week transports of German Jews coming to settle in Palestine. German Jewish settlement of Palestine was, for a time, official Nazi policy. These photos of Jewish life in Palestine, along with a lengthy text, appeared in 1934 in the Berlin paper Der Angriff. A Nazi visits Palestine was the title of the multi-part series. A medal was struck by Goebbels in commemoration. On one side, the swastika. On the other, the Star of David. That said, the relations deteriorated between the German Templars that spent decades building the community there and other migrants that were in political alignment with the British, some of whom emigrated from places like Russia in alignment with Russian Bolsheviks, who were the Marxist origins of the communist revolution that killed tens of millions and then became the Soviet Union. The British ran what is now Israel from the end of the First World War, and by the time of the Second World War, decided that after nearly a century in Haifa, the German Templars needed to be kicked out, deporting them en masse to Germany. Many of the children of the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Yiddish-speaking Germans who populated Palestine from 33 to 39 are unaware of this history and are also taught propaganda in their schools. Yiddish, by the way, is one of the dialects of Alemannic Germany that belongs to the High German group, like Swabian, from the region of Bavaria, which leads us to these coins, which I showed in my last video, which I'll leave a link to in the description, which was about ancient symbols, such as a swastika and what some call the Seal of Solomon, both symbols appearing together on the same coin, as they also often appear together on ancient Phoenician archeological sites, or ancient structures in places like Lalibela, Ethiopia, that contained both the swastika carved into stone churches as well as the seal of Solomon built by the Knights Templar. This is suppressed because it goes against the narrative pushed by modern post-World War II academia, media, Hollywood, as well as people who call themselves truthers that saturate social media with false information disseminated by the same globalist bankers that they claim to be united against.